Good day everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today we will be talking about how to generate motion blur with a physical shape. Uh, I prefer to call this speed mesh as you've seen in the thumbnail so let me show you how not to do it. Um, now initially uh, when I started working with this method the goal was to simply use as was the idea in the um, initial stages to simply use the hook modifier paired with a slow parent. This did not work well and the reason it does not work well is because the, the rigs that you, that you typically find in Make Human are tied to an origin point here whereas the hook modifier works with an origin point meaning that even if you had all your vertices that will be affected with the hook modifier over here, it does not work with a normalized center. The result is a very unique look for motion blur, as you can see, uh, as opposed to what you've seen in the opening. Now the opening looks a lot different, so let me show you what that works like before we come back here where I show you how to do it the correct way. Now, as you've seen in the example, we have Mordecai doing his thing. Backflip. Very cool. Now, the way this works is with a slow parent and a hook modifier. Okay. So, if you were to move this sphere, you can see that it distorts as it moves. That's exactly what you want when it comes to uh, a speed mesh type of effect. Um, what I did in this case was I simply... Uh, a sphere, slow parented a circle to it, same origin point, otherwise you will get distortion, look at this, see? And all you do is you add a hook modifier to it, the sphere, you select your circle, you select the vertex group for distorting it. Uh, you can paint this, but preferably just using select random is ideal, let me show you. This is what it looks like if you select random. As you can see, it's not very high resolution, and the reason it's not is so that it can be customized. This one specifically is for the fingers, uh, finger joints and stuff. So all I did was I just stretched it on the z-axis so that if the hand moves, for whatever reason, you get a nice speedy effect to it. So when, when Godfrey dealt with me about this, I did not follow the best method possible. Uh, it is a method that works. I'm going to show you that um, in the example. So let's switch to that. So basically all you need to do is you can, um, like I just mentioned, uh, do it the long way, which is to separate out your object, duplicate like the genes, for example. I don't think they're qualifying as genes anymore. Uh, apply the armature, apply the edge split, no, 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 not the edge split. Get rid of the edge split. Oh, edge split. <laughs> edge split. Ah, funny. Okay, um, so all you need to do is you need to separate it out by piece. For example, your legs don't bend over there, your legs don't bend over there. So this is a solid piece, joint, solid piece, solid piece, joint, solid piece. So that gives you six on the legs alone. And you can use a one, a single piece over here, or you can use two. Same for the shoulder and chest area. You can use two pieces over here and a single piece in here and one for the belt area if you want to. Uh, again, single, joint, single, joint, uh, joint, joint, single, joint, and single. And of course, the fingers, same situation. And only on the fingers, you don't have to add the joint circle because they're too small. So you only have single piece, single piece, single piece, single piece, single piece, single piece plus one big one for the hand. So that gives you 15 for the hand in total. It's 15 times two, 30, you know, so you can see that this gets quite busy very shortly or very quickly, not shortly. So let me get to the method. So all you do is you take your piece from the leg, uh, make it openness like that, separate it out using P, tap out, Okay, now we need to just shrink it into the leg so that it's not visible all the time messing with our uh, surface. So you can take the first piece, shrink it in. Using the uh, Z view, wireframe view is much more 
convenient in this case, shrink it eyes in into the leg. Another way of doing this is to use the solidify modifier. I haven't tried using that for this method, so it's up to you to give that a shot if you want to. And of course, uh, on the edges, you can, this is not a have to, but this helps, to shrink it in so that it almost forms like a, a, a smooth top and a smooth bottom, there and there. Uh, this just simply helps you when the leg bends or whatever the case might be. It also smooths out the spikes and what have you. So just shrink those down. Not a have to, it's just works. Okay, that's good. Now let's add our origin to our geometry so that we can actually parent it effectively. Uh, that is good. Let's add our 3D cursor in there. So let's say Shift S, cursor to selected, and add a circle. Now the reason I add a circle is just because it works. Um, and just apply its rotation and scale. If you want to, you can rotate it to conform to that shape. And that looks good. Now before I parent the circle to the leg part, I'm going to parent the leg part to the rig. So what you need to do is you need to, if you use Make Human, make your bones visible. All you need to do to do that is you select your rig and you go into the um, little character over here and you select this layer over here. It gives you your legs. So we take this one and we stick it to, sorry, hold on. I just want to deselect, oh, make it unselectable. That's the right word. Okay. Now we take that one and we stick it to this bone over here. So I'm going to deselect this thing to select it to this one. Go pose mode. Make sure it's in the rest position so that you don't get any funny displacement. So you've got this one, select that bone, only this one single bone. And you press Control P, say bone. Now if you go pose position and it's already animated, you can see that it goes with the leg. This is just a simple leg animation to show you that it does move. As you can see it's very effective. Now what you do is you parent your circle to this single piece. Go object, go into your object settings and set the slope parent. I use about 1.5. You don't have to use 1.5, you can use something else. Just make sure it's only this circle, not this one. Uh, set it to be, say, 1.5 or 2. For just for the sake of illustration, I'm going to say 2. Now go back to your piece and deselect everything and select random on vertices, sorry. Select random set it to about 35% and add a new vertex group, call it motion, assign it, uh, oh goodness, not assign it, goodness, I forgot you just need to deselect this top part, otherwise it looks like the uh, mesh is fraying at the top and at the bottom, it creates very weird artifacts sometimes, not always, just sometimes, um, so if you prefer to leave it on as an experiment, you go right ahead. Okay, uh, did I sign that? Just in case. Okay, so add a hook modifier and select your circle as your object because the circle needs to pull on our um, leg and select motion. Now, check it out. Look at that. Now as you can see this is a very low resolution example but it does serve the purpose. Um, this is not the only way to do it. Um, the other way is to pre-make an object and parent that to a bone, which is what I prefer. Uh, so all you need to do in that case is create like a setup, which is like a sphere. I use the, the round cube because it gives me more even geometry. And you add a circle to that. Shift S, cursor to selected, and add a circle. Make it slightly bigger. Control A, rotation and scale. Parent it to the sphere. Make the sphere smooth. Smooth, you need to make it smooth. 
funny. Okay, go to the object and set it to 1.5. I'm going to show you how to make this a driver so that you don't have to do this with every single thing. So why not, let's just do that right now. Uh, add a driver and let's add a shape for the driver. I use text and just call it, um, say, uh, speed mesh driver. Fabulous. And add a custom property under the objects stuff. Let's call this one uh, speed mesh or slow parent. You can call it slow parent as well. Maximum, let's say five. You're not really going to go beyond five. Okay. So we have our custom property. Copy the path, copy data path. Just right click on the property, say copy data path. Go onto your object where you place the driver. Slow parent. Go into the graph editor using this little comb tool to open it up. Select drivers. You have to click on this and scroll down. Okay. Now here it's going to give you a default variable. All you need to do is just type in there variable. Select the object that you want to copy it from, which is our text. Say single property under the drop down and paste your data path in here and hit enter. Now, if you look at this, you can see it says 1. If I turn this up to 5, you can see it's now 5. So if you simply duplicate this circle and sphere combination, this will always be set, depending on certain circumstances. I'm sure there are circumstances when they separate, so I'm just going to set this back to 1.5 because that works. Let's just quickly set this up with random deformation. Call this motion assign. And let's add a hook modifier to that. Circle motion. And that should do it. Let's see. Yep, perfect. Uh, let's add the skin material. Let's go skin and let's add this specific one to the finger. Not an issue. Let's just see what axis it needs to be on. Let's put this one in the tip of the finger because it moves faster. Shrink it down. go. Shrink it down a little bit more. Place it nice and in the finger. I'm going to time lapse this because it takes a little while. Okay, so now we simply just need to parent this to the finger. So in this case I'm just going to show you that you can use vertex parenting as well. So you select your piece, select the finger, Select three points so you get scale rotation. I really hope this works. <laughs> I've had some trouble earlier today with uh, vertex parenting and it just, it was nasty. It was really, really nasty. So uh, let's select that one. Control P. Yeah, it works. Fabulous. See, look at that. So all you need to do is you just need to apply this throughout your whole rig. And then you got that movement echo. Unfortunately, this is not something that um, echoes with a curve. In other words, this doesn't turn as it moves. It's pretty much from point to point, uh, frame to frame. So um, if you want to script something like that, add more bones to it or whatever the case might be, you're more than welcome to do that. This is just simply showing you how it works. So I hope that clarifies it for you guys. This does take a lot of work, so obviously I'm not going to cover the whole process in the tutorial, but this is the method. I hope you can use this in your projects, and I hope that you find this extremely useful. Have a great one, and God bless.